Hey everybody, Dave here, Hidden Off Grid, and welcome to another video. In this video, I want to kind of talk about dreams in general. Uh, we all have dreams, especially when we're younger. And I want to kind of talk about some of my dreams and kind of mention why people don't really ever achieve their dreams or even really even go after them really which is kind of interesting so obviously um, you know a lot of us get stuck in the rat race um, you know just the quarrels of life or whatever you want to call it where you go to work you come home you cook you sit down you eat you watch some tv and before you know it it's time to go to bed and uh, guess what the alarm clock goes off you wake up you roll out of bed you SSS, right? Uh, sh shower and shave, and uh, and then you go to work, and then the whole process starts over again. The weekend comes around, and you're probably too tired to do anything, um, or maybe you fit one thing in there, leisure activity that you enjoy doing, like hiking for me, um, or something else, right? Or you maybe clean. Um, I don't know. So. Obviously, when we're all younger, we all have dreams and then they kind of change and they kind of get pushed to the wayside when we get older. Um, but, you know, I'm going to kind of share some of my dreams when I was younger. Um, I came from, let me see, my grandpa on my dad's side was an engineer. So he's got many patents and a lot of those patents are on cars to this day. Um, and the thing is, is he uh, built his own motorhome. It was like a 40 foot you know, motorhome. Now it was pretty ugly to be honest with you, but because it didn't look like a traditional motorhome, it was kind of square. Um, but he built that, drove the, drove it home, has the pictures. I mean, I don't know where the pictures are. He's passed away many, 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 many years ago, decades ago at this point. So, um, he, uh, built the motorhome, drove the, <laughs> drove the chassis home, literally sat down in a two by four and it was just a steering wheel and a chassis and a motor and that was it and uh, the rest was history and he cut the frame in half and extended it by i don't know like 20 feet or something like that because it was like over feet 40 feet and it was a dually in the back but it was not tandem so it was kind of interesting because every time i used to go over there when i was a kid you know he knew this motorhome um, inside and backwards but i kind of you know just i thought that was cool you know and i had a lot in common with him. I'm a lefty, he was a lefty, you know, and I'm an engineer today, um, different type of engineer, obviously. Um, I am a computer engineer, so, um, you know, he was more of kind of just a general engineer and he could fix anything, could build anything. So I remember one year we got um, radio controlled cars. If anybody remembers the frog back in the 80s, like one of the very cool, very first radio control cars that was, you know, the shit really. And uh, dad sent us over there, my brother and I sent us over there to grandpa's house to put them together. And he was just too slow for me. So I was kind of just off on my own doing stuff and putting stuff together. And I'm younger than my brother and he's, you know, kind of following the directions and I'm kind of not. So um, I put a screw in the wrong hole. That kind of sounds bad, doesn't it? I put a screw in the wrong hole and pretty much reamed the hole out. Am I still talking about radio controlled cars at this point? Yes, I am. So, and then he has to go out to the garage and find some bigger screw to put in there. And he's like, don't you touch this, you know? <laughs> so he kind of took over the build and all that, but um, it was just, you know, it was a good time. But what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say here is that kind of set me up to move forward uh, with the engineering thinking and just a lot of other projects that we did over the years and him designing and redesigning portions of the RV, which I never really got to see the build process, but there was a lot of stuff that he continued to work on even after years after it was built. So, you know, I remember back in the early eighties, I also, um, always wanted to take like a Greyhound bus and convert that to an RV. And, you know, to this day, um, those dreams have kind of changed a little bit, I've, you know, kind of thought, you know, that kind of fell to the wayside probably for 30 years and, uh, probably in just till about, I don't know, about three or four years ago, um, I came across a channel, you know, it was RVing across the United States going up to Alaska and then he sold the RV and he bought, uh, he flew down to Florida, bought a schoolie. 
So he bought a bus. It was a 40 foot bus, by the way. I think it's called a 12 window, or if I'm not mistaken. It's a diesel pusher, has the engine in the back. It's by Bluebird. And it's, you know, it's a diesel pusher because they make ones with the front engines as well. So it's just called an RE model, Bluebird RE, all American. And uh, he started converting that to an RV. And that I found out that there's a huge following behind that, like schooly, right? So that is a, a new dream of mine at this point. So it went from a Greyhound to a schoolie. Now, obviously, if I could afford a, um, you know, a Provost chassis or something like that that's got the tandem, the rear wheel steering, the, the lift and all that with the airbags and stuff, I would go that route. But you can normally get school buses for, now they've gone up quite a bit in price just because of the pandemic, but you used to be able to get a, a 40 foot school bus for about three or $4,000 used. Um, I think that same bus now, you'd have a hard time finding one for less than about $15,000. You'd probably find one for 50, less than 15, anywhere between 10 and 15, but I think on average they're going for about $15,000 now. So that's my new dream at this point is to convert a bus to an RV it's called a schoolie, S-K-O-O-L-I-E. And so that's kind of what I'm going to be looking at doing here in the next, uh, I don't know, next few years or so. Because right now I don't have a place to do it. And I uh, have all the tools or most of the tools to do it, welders and stuff. So um, that is the new dream. But what are some other dreams? Some other dreams are, and this is probably a dream for the last uh, 20 years or so, is to have a shop, you know, and a house. And honestly, I don't really care how big the house is. Um, as long as it's got like a, you know, a five car garage and it's got an RV stall and all that, you know, so, and some lifts in there. And I just want a shop. And that is a dream that I definitely want to make happen. I want to live on some property, 40 acres preferably, and have a house, you know, that's, you know, adequate size. 1,500 to 2,000 square feet for the house. You know, I don't really, like honestly, I don't really care how big the house is, as long as it's got a really nice kitchen in it, nice sitting area, and uh, kind of a family room area. Open design, open floor plan. I'm pretty much probably just gonna end up buying property and then design the house for myself and have it built, and I'll probably, can, you know, probably help build it as well, just to save on labor, because I actually enjoy that type of stuff. Um, years ago, probably when I was in my, uh, or early teens, I wanted to be an architect and I wanted to, I was designing floor plans for houses and all that stuff. And then I wanted to be a general contractor and that kind of changed. And um, I got into computers big time when I was younger, uh, probably when I was like nine years old or so. Got into programming and then that kind of just spiraled out of control. I was really good at computers, so I went that route. And I'm really glad I went that route too, because obviously, you know, construction work is not for the faint of heart. It's not easy work, it's seasonal, it's recession not proof or not recession proof. So I'm really glad I went down the IT route. It's what I'm really good at, it's what I'm very passionate about. So literally going to work um, a lot of my career really wasn't work at all. Um, now I've had some really shitty jobs over the years and working 12 hour nights and all that stuff, but um, I'm not gonna you know, deny that I've had a very fruitful career. It's got me to where I am today to be able to early retire next year, hopefully with $2 million. Um, so yes, this right here is gonna be a reality hopefully soon. And then the shop uh, with some property and a house is another reality. And those are dreams that I've always had. Um, now they've kind of changed, you know, I mean, things kind of change, they drift, they, you know, I don't know, they spiral out of control, things change, you know, something like that. So you kind of, you know, let them change. But what I want to talk about is in general, People just don't fulfill their dreams. They don't even really go after their dreams. I don't know if they life gets in the way, they get married and they have kids and they kind of put it off, okay, I'll just do it after I have kids, or they completely forget about it, or their wants change. Um, and then I, you know, I've kind of asked this to various questions and stuff, you know, are these dreams, is, you know, are these, is this normal? You know, have dreams and not go after them, not chase them, not try to make them become a reality. Um, and honestly, a lot of the dreams, it's kind of a, uh, it's either this dream or kids, or it's this dream or getting married, you know, or it's this dream and having a family. It's like a compromise there. Or is it possible to have what you want, follow your dreams, 
plus get married, plus have a kids, plus have a family. Can you have both, right? So as I remember, I've had some sports cars over the years and I pulled up to a party one time and my 911 Porsche, you know, and they're like, oh, you must not have kids. And I'm like, what does he mean by that? And he's like, oh, you'll understand when you're older, you know, and you have kids. So yes, I get it. Your needs change and your priorities change, but do you have to give up what makes you happy, your dreams, all that stuff? Um, I'm kind of curious, you know, I want to know what your dreams are. Uh, are you going to fulfill your dreams? Have you just pretty much lost sight of them? Has, you know, life gotten your way or anything like that? Um, in my, in my opinion, you know, for me, that's something that's going to be a priority for me is making the dreams that I've always had become a reality, right? I didn't work all these years to not fulfill those dreams, to lay on my deathbed thinking about, oh, I wish I would have done a schoolie and traveled across the United States and going to all these national parks and all that stuff. Um, that probably would be a regret, you know? People don't regret the things that they did. They regret the things that they didn't do, right? So I wanna hear down in the comments, you know, what are your dreams? Have you lost sight of them? Have you made them reality? Um, I would love to hear that stuff. So anyways, I hope that this video really helps you out because this is a little bit of a thought-provoking video. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and comment below. Uh, you can hit me up on Facegram, you can hit me up on Twitter, you can shoot me an email if you want as well. So until next time, stay safe and uh, go ahead and like, subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.